How's it going? So here we are. We're finally going to do the question and answer video. Um, I really cannot thank everyone enough for the questions I sent in, um, for the support. I really didn't think when Leon had sent me a message about doing a question and answer video. Um, I kind of giggled at the thought of it. Um, I don't view myself nearly, nearly highly enough as far as some of the people that I see do these kinds of videos. Um, so to see the overwhelming response that you guys wanted to see this, um, that you guys sent as many questions, I had almost like, I think close to 40 questions, um, was just amazing. So thank you guys so much um, for always, you know, supporting the things I want to do and being there to make stuff like this happen. This video would have been really short and really boring um, if I didn't have all the questions from you guys. So thank you guys so much. Um, I did get a couple messages off Anonymous. Um, I'm not going to mention names on those questions, um, just because I think I only got one or two that were that actual users sent without um, going on and on. So if you want me to, to do a little shout out later on in a post to say which questions were yours, feel free. Um, I have no problem. Uh, so without any further gilding the lily, let's get down to business. I have all my questions here on the phone. I also, I apologize if any of this is, um, at any point you can't hear me. Um, this is, I don't have a really good setup. I've never really done any video recording. I don't have editing software. I don't have a microphone. I don't have an independent camera. This is my webcam on my, um, on my laptop, the mic on my laptop. I have to have it sitting a little bit further away. So it's not like just zoomed in on my face. Um, so hopefully this goes well. Let's start. The first one I got was one of the more entertaining questions, in my opinion. Um, it was from an anonymous. Just says, "Will you marry me?" Probably not. <laughs> um, nothing to do with you. I'm sure you're a fantastic and lovely person, and I would love. I mean, I love getting messages. So if you ever want to message me again, feel free. Um, I just I don't believe in marriage for myself. I don't think I would ever really get married. Um, nothing to do with not wanting that type of commitment. Um, more to do with the idea of marriage, that legal contract kind of thing. Um, I mean, if I love somebody, I see no reason why I need to sign a little piece of paper so that, you know, my governor and my mayor knows that I love that person. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And then God, again, I'm also a huge proponent of not knowing what's going to happen in life, always being open to what can possibly happen. Um, God forbid a situation ever came to that where I did get married in, in a situation where I was married and it did end. That's messy, really, really messy. Um, it never goes, I've never really known too many divorces or like splits like that that were amicable and everyone ended up really happy. <laughs> There's always some, at least some type of like trial and tribulation in those situations. So for me personally, I don't think I'd ever get married. Um, I'm sorry if that disappoints anybody. <laughs> um, moving on, what is my favorite pomade? Um, this is one that I actually get asked a lot, um, just in person. Um, not as much on here anymore. When I first started doing my, my little hair thing, um, people that asked me. Um, I had my, I've had barbers ask me and stuff too. A lot of the barbers I go to don't like really using pomade, which is kind of blows my mind. They don't like using water-based pomades anyway. Um, but my favorite pomade is I, I actually went and got it. Um, is Suavecito pomade. Uh, it's from Santa Ana, California. This stuff is phenomenal. Um, not only does it hold amazingly well, and this is the original hold, um, by the way, this isn't anything special. Um, they do have a firm hold, which is like fucking cement. <laughs> um, this is just the original hold. It holds up amazing. Um, I mean, I've worn it on rainy days, on snowy days, and it holds up against weather. Wind can't move this shit, um, but it comes out in the shower like super super easy this is water soluble and it smells amazing um like every time i get a new tin or a new can i open it up and i just jam my nose in it just like stick my nose right in there and i just take a big whip because this stuff smells phenomenal um so guys out there um ladies too they also do make a ladies pomade which is a little bit softer it doesn't have the same kind of hold um called suave cita comes in a um four ounce uh four ounce little jars they have a bunch of really cool label designs, too. You guys, go check them out at suavecito.com. You can just Google it. Um, these guys are fucking amazing. Um, but, yeah, I highly recommend it to anyone that has aspirations for hair like this, um, male, female, or whatever, or what have you. 
any in between. So if you guys want to do something cool with your hair like this, Suave Cito Pomade, the Suave Cita Pomade, the, um, the one uh, they made for women, like it's a, it's a softer hold, I guess. Both are fantastic products. Go check them out. Santa Ana, California. No more shout out to them. They probably won't see this video anyway, though. Um, the next question would be, we have favorite vapor flavor. Um, this is one that's actually pretty recent. Um, it's something I just picked up. This cool little um, vape shop that opened up down the street from where I work called 5-1 Vape. Shout out to those guys. They've been absolutely phenomenal because I've been going, uh, dealing with them. It is unicorn milk from Cutwood. Um, this stuff is delicious. It's like a strawberries and cream. Almost, almost tastes exactly like strawberry milk. Um, I'm assuming. I don't think I've actually had strawberry milk. Um, but it's amazing. It tastes great. It's, um, it's a little bit higher. Um, blend as far as PG, BG stuff goes. I mean, I don't know how many of you actually know what, like, would care what that means. Um, but it is, so it's a little bit more, it's a little bit thicker, so it doesn't always work in the lower end devices, like high, higher end tanks like that, or it, it performs phenomenally. Um, I use it in my, my Aspire Nautilus, and it is fan-fucking-tastic. Um, I can get, I can go pretty high on voltage. I can pretty much max out that atomizer with the voltage um, and with the wattage, and it's just, I mean, I'll show you guys. tastes great it really performs i mean this is a i think a week and a half almost two week old atomizer head and it still is producing a lot of it i mean when i know when i'm when i'm changing these out in the next, in the next day or two it's going to be even even more even more um vapor it's going to be back to what it was before i actually have i just put in an order for um my first 50 watt my first like big boy mod um it's 18650 um an 18650 box mod um, and Kanger's new sub tank. So I'm super duper excited because the vapor production on those is just absolutely insane. Um, so I'm really excited to try that and have a liquid like this, a high VG liquid like this. It's a 7030 um, for anyone who was curious who's watching. Um, that produces that kind of vapor. So I'm going to have just fuck. <laughs> My room is going to be a cloud. All right. Um, next one will be favorite color. Um, I also shout out to the to this little Anon who sent it um, to the English, Irish, Australian version of the spelling of the word C O C O L O U R. I appreciate that. Um, I used to get shouted at by many of my Australian friends for misspelling words like that, like um, favorite and uh, and color. So good on you. Um, my favorite color. I'm not going to, I could say black because most of the stuff that I own is in black. Um, a lot of the, the vape mods that I own are black. Um, most of my shirts, including my minor threat t-shirt, by the way, um, it's all black, but definitely not my favorite color. I just think it's the easiest to, to wear, to carry around. Um, I think my favorite color is probably various shades of green. I've always really liked the color green. Um, for the longest time, I think probably for like six years, I had a lime green room. Um, when I was living with my parents, I painted my, my walls lime green. Loved it. It was crazy. People were like, oh, how do you sleep in a room that bright? Just close my eyes. I can't see the fucking walls when my eyes are closed. Um, so that's probably my favorite color. How many tattoos do you have? Um, if you don't count each individual finger, I think I have nine. Let me count them. Ten if you don't count each individual finger, and that's counting this the fingers on this hand and the fingers on this hand. So nine with including all ten fingers. Um, ten if you count if I count each hand. Um, I do have plans for more. Um, I know there was another anonymous that sent pretty much kind of the same question. I do have plans for more. Um, it's just a matter of money at this point. Tattoos are not cheap. Um, and despite my efforts uh, to to work in a tattoo shop, I haven't been able to balance it between normal work, working in a shop, and my own mental health. I had a lot of issues with that at the most recent shop I was at. Um, and I had, a, I had to leave that shop, which I, was regrettable. Um, they were great guys. I was on the right track to learn a lot. Um, so hopefully I'll get another chance for that. And what the purpose of working in a tattoo shop? I get tattooed on the artist or board. So let's hope that comes back into my, um, into my life sometime soon. 
favorite burlesque dancer? Um, hmm. This is tough because I feel like the people I would name, you guys might not know unless you are from my area, which I always forget how many of you are actually from here, from like the upstate, like Albany area, um, aside from the people that I obviously know in real life. And even some of them might not know these people. Um, my favorite dancer around here um, is one that actually just stole my heart last, um, not last night. What was that? Saturday night. Um, Saturday night. Her name uh, is Miss Georgia O'Peach. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Nice, beautiful smile. And she's just a vibrant personality. Really comes off on, in her performance as well. Um, the reason she is now my favorite is this was a punk rock burlesque show. So they had a live band, a live local band. Totally gnarly. You guys should check them out if you haven't. They're fucking amazing. Um, they were great, great dudes. They learned two hours worth of cover songs in two weeks to play this show. That's awesome. And they killed all of them, too. Um, but she performed to the song Skull by the Misfits. Um, that's something I didn't think I'd ever see. And, oh my god, was it amazing. And she handed out, I didn't see this part, but I guess she handed out little flowers that had severed Barbie heads, super glued into the center of them. Um, I was talking to her after her performance. She was like, oh, did you get one? Did you get one? I'm like, no, I wish I had. I'm like, that is one of my favorite Misfits songs. And to know that you even just went up and performed to it was just blew my mind. Um, as far as, like, my favorite, like, I guess, well-known, um, Dirty Martini, she was one of the first burlesque dancers I actually, like, saw, like, four routines for, um, and she just has this amazing, like, bubbly, fun, light-hearted personality when she performs that, actually, all the performances I've seen, I'm not, I don't know much about her career or anything like that, so don't, like, quote me on any shit, um, but the performance I've seen, she's this very fun, light-hearted, kind of airy personality, and it was great, it was what kind of got me really liking burlesque, so kudos to her. Top five favorite songs. This is going to be an impossible list because if you ask me this next week, my list will be completely different. Um, I'll just list some of the songs that I always like to sing. Um, and they're not necessarily going to be my absolute favorite songs, but they're the ones that I know I like enough to learn the goddamn lyrics to. Um, Melrose Diner by Wonder Years is just a phenomenal song. Um, I mean, any of the Wonder Years is a phenomenal song. You can't go wrong with the Wonder Years. But, yeah, so Mount Steiner by The Wonder Years, one of my favorites. I always, 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 whenever that comes on, I will sing it at the top of my lungs. I don't care how bad it is. Um, it's Never Sunny in South Philadelphia is another one by the, by the Wonder Years. Again, love it. Absolutely love it. A little bit depressing, but who doesn't like a little depressing music now and then? Um, Perseverance by Hatebreed. Phenomenal, phenomenal, like, song. It always just gets me so pumped up. Whenever I'm having, like, my, my mustache is creeping into my mouth a little bit. I apologize about that. Rogue beards. Um, whenever I'm having, like, one of those days where, like, I feel, like, defeated or down or I'm not feeling up to getting out of bed and, like, living life, I play that song at full volume and I scream along with it. And the, the one downside is when the breakdown in that hits and he just starts... Just, he just, the vocals cut out, and the drums hit, and the guitar slows down a little bit. I go, ape shit, even if I'm in my car. I mean, I busted my hand a couple times on my on my roof and on my seats, just going fucking nuts when that um, when that song hits. It's an amazing song, and it inspires me. Hate Breeds music has always really inspired me to kind of like just push forward no matter what. Um, highly recommend it to anyone who likes hardcore. If you, for, if you like hardcore and you haven't listened to Hate Breeds, then I don't know what the fuck you're doing. But. Um, oh, God, another one. Ugh. Mm, I guess Nothing Left to Mutilate by Cannibal Corpse is one of my favorites. Cannibal Corpse was like the the, the band that made me realize how much I like music. Um, very, very old death metal band. They're phenomenal. Um, probably one of the most disgusting bands I've ever listened to. Um, it still blows my mind that after as long as they've been going, they can still come up with new and horrifying ways to hurt people in their lyrics. Um, just, uh, I mean... George Fisher, Corpse Grinder, he's just a sick, twisted man, and I applaud him for that. I applaud him for wanting to do the things that he does and get on him. Um, and lastly, I'm going to pick The Beer by Kimmy Doss. Um, completely different from everything else. Um, quirky little um, folk singer, little mixed race folk singer. She's phenomenal. Um, I wish she was more famous because she totally fucking deserves it. This woman is... A lyric, a lyrical madwoman. Um, is the only thing I can describe her as. 
Um, but the beer is a great song. I heard it years and years and years and years ago. I think I was 17 when the first time I heard it, 17 or 18. And um, it just blew me away. It was just the most ridiculous, like, off-the-wall so- song that I wasn't really sure what it was about. And her voice is just, I mean, it's not, conventionally speaking, not a good singing voice. She's not a good singer. And she's not like a mind-blowing guitar player. But she has a cute, um, like, endearing voice that I find addicting to listen to, similar to, um, like, Hello Safe Ride or, um, like, Ingrid Michaelson. Um, stuff like that. That kind of, like, folky, female-fronted band thing. Um, but I heard that, and it blew me away. I became an instant fan of her and the Molly Peaches. Um, for one of the reasons I love this, the movie Juno so much, because I knew tons of people that got into Kimmy Dawson because of that movie. And I was at that movie singing along to her songs in the movie, because I was already like, oh my god, like this is so fucking amazing that her songs are in a movie. Um, okay, we're moving on, because this is, by the way, this is going to be a really long video, um, so I apologize to anyone who doesn't want to sit through it. If you just wanted to, I had a bunch of people that were saying they can't wait to hear my voice, or people that have heard my voice and want to hear it again. Um, I don't know why you guys like it so much. Um, I'm glad you do. So if you just want to check this out to hear how I sound, um, feel free to tune out at any point. There's going to be a lot of questions. Um, ideal date. I don't know. <laughs> um, I try, I personally try and um, kind of perpetuate a dating culture. I feel like in our society now, that has fallen by the wayside. It's like the second you, um, we have all these different labels of, are we talking? Are we seeing each other? Are we, boy, are we dating? Like, and it's, I don't understand it. Like when I say like, oh, I'm talking to this person. It means at that moment, I am physically speaking to the person, whether it's on the phone, in person, or in text messages. That's what that means. That doesn't imply any type of infatuation or anything, anything. Just talking. It's like what I'm doing now. I'm talking to you guys. Um, so, but I do try and perpetuate like a dating culture where you actually get to know people um, in a, in a non-committed sense, where you know we'll hang out, we'll go have drinks, we'll go maybe get some food, we'll go to a movie, we'll go walk around downtown, do something, something fun. Um, and that and a situation where that doesn't necessarily mean that I am now committed to you and you are not now committed to me. If you have had you know another date the next night. Awesome. Like, it blows my mind that people are expected to just instantly be connected like that and just be like, oh, like, this is the person I'm dating now. Like, we hung out twice, so I guess we're, we're you know, he's my boyfriend or she's my girlfriend or something like that. Um, I apply the same rules to sex, too. I'm not going to get into that in the movie, or in, in the movie, in this video, because I just don't want to. That's a really, really deep, involved thing. And it's more fun in a discussion than it is for me to just ramble on. So ideal date, I don't know. Um, I do try and, like I said, I try and perpetuate dating culture. I don't go on a ton of dates. Um, as of lately, I've been really, really fighting with depression and things like that. Um, I only very recently started being social again after like three months of basically isolation, only talking to my family and people I work with, and that's something because they pay me to do it. Um, so I'm just, I'm just kind of getting out back into doing social things. Um, this past Saturday was the first time I've ever gone somewhere by myself, fully knowing or fully expecting to only be by myself that whole night. And I did it and I went and did it. Um, thankfully I did run into a couple people I knew. My friend Shelby was there at the door and, you know, so we were hanging out and my friend Pat ended up showing up later. Um, but it was still a huge, huge moment for me because I've never done something like that. Um, I made new friends. I was talking to guys in the band. There was, you know, I was chatting up with, um, Girls at the bar, um, I did get to chat with, like I said, Miss Georgia O'Peach. Well, oh my God, I can't believe she talked to me. <laughs> um, that was pretty great. Um, had I not been such a drunken slob, I probably would have capitalized on it a little bit more and actually taken the chance to talk with her. Um, but I went a little nuts at being my first time out and about in social settings in a while. Might have had a little bit too much to drink. Got home safe. You know, didn't do anything dangerous or stupid, so I guess we're good there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know what my ideal date would be. Ask me again in three months, assuming that I keep up this trend of being social. Maybe I'll get a date. Maybe I'll have a better idea what I want to do on a date. I just, all I know is ideal date, something fun. Something that isn't just, let's go to a movie. Terrible date idea, by the way. Terrible fucking first date. Don't take people to movies on the first date. That's stupid. Because all that says is, I want to sit in silence with you in a dark room for like an hour and a half dinner and a movie, better idea. Drinks and dinner, or drinks and a movie, also a good idea. Not, never just a movie. Don't go to just a movie. Remember that. 
all you guys out there, all you girls out there, anyone who's asking people on dates, don't do just a movie. Do something else after. Okay. That was a lot longer than I wanted to be. I apologize for the, the sniffling. It's winter. This little guy doesn't help with that. And then chills everything in my nose and runs a little bit, so. It's gross, I know, but whatever. I'm a guy. I'm a person in general. We're gross. Humans are gross. Deal with it. Um, favorite beer. Um, this is going to be another really hard one because I love beer. Um, like a lot. It's a passion. I love the idea of crafting beer, um, like brewing it. I have friends who brew beer. I do plan on getting into it a little bit more once I'm back in my own place and kind of have the freedom to have a setup. Right now I'm in a very small room, so I can't really brew beer in my own room at my parents' house. Um, but favorite beer? I guess my, my fallback normally if I'm out in public is Guinness. Um, most bars have it. It's a decent stout. Um, it's a dry a dry Irish stout, which is I mean it's good. It's not it's not a bad beer as far as stouts go. It's probably one of my least favorite stouts. Um, at least your general Guinness draft. I mean fucking like Guinness extra stout is really really good. I like it a lot better. Or an extra is great once in a while if you're having like one or two. Yeah, more than that. That shit is fucking strong. And if Brandon doesn't know, that's the stuff that's actually brewed in Ireland. Um, Guinness Draft and Extra Stout are both brewed in, uh, in Canada and imported. Um, Warren Extra is actually brewed in St. James Gate, Dublin with the Guinness recipe. And, oh my god, is it strong and is it delicious. Um, but I guess my fallback for anything else, if I can find it, is I actually grab a bottle because I do have part of my bottle collection is Shake Chocolate Porter. Um, it is a chocolate porter. Um, Brewed in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I haven't had anything else by um, by Boulder beer. Um, I imagine a, a great brewery. This beer is amazing. It kind of smells like brownies, which is cool. Um, tastes a little bit like liquid brownies. Also really cool. But it's a great beer. If you ever see it out and you are a fan of darker beers, even if you're not a fan of darker beers, try it. Because it's really not a harsh, like intense flavor. It's just a very full, um, delicious flavor. So if you ever see it out, Give it a try. Ask the bartender, hey, can I sample that? If they say no, you're at a shitty bar and you can probably leave anyway. So that's, I guess, my favorite beer. Um, favorite cartoon? I don't really know. Um, I have a ton. Uh, I watch a lot of cartoons, um, which is convenient being that my three-year-old niece now stays with us most of the time. Um, because she'll come in and just watch cartoons with me. I think it's one of the reasons she likes coming in to say hi to me is because she knows I'm probably watching cartoons. Um, I watch a lot of um, The Amazing World of Gumball. I think that's a great show. It's very weird and strange and just fun. Um, Adventure Time also is a fantastic cartoon. Um, I think it actually... Adventure Time is one of those cartoons that nowadays I think reminds me of what car, what I wanted cartoons to be or what they were when I was younger, where they had those messages. They had those, like almost like those lessons that you didn't even know were lessons at the time because we were just so like entertained with it and i think adventure time kind of does that i think it's addressing very serious and very like not necessarily childish lessons but i think that's cool because i think that's going to kind of stick in their minds you know in the back of their heads like um the stuff about like confidence and self-worth that they talk about and very subtly um i think that's going to stick with kids and we're going to have people that are growing up with remembering with that kind of ingrained into their heads um and that's really cool uh, i also love american dad i think american dad is a phenomenal show um i think it's a great um uh i guess it's i it's like borderline satirical in a way um not necessarily obviously because the main subjects is just a normal like middle-aged white family um or middle class not middle-aged um, middle class white family. So I guess it's it's, it's borderline satirical because um, it's kind of very tongue in cheek with a lot of the stuff they talk about as far as um, they do a lot with they do a lot a lot a lot with like race relations, um, especially in regards to um, American and Muslim race relations. Um, obviously, it's I won't say it's tastefully done um, by any means. It is Seth MacFarlane, and he's anything anything except tasteful. Um, but I don't think it's dam it's as damaging as other ways of doing that could be. Um, it's still very entertaining. I think it's very well written. The characters are 
just so out of the like out of this world like ridiculous that it's almost impossible to take anything that's happening in it seriously and it's very like i said it's very tongue-in-cheek kind of like over exaggerating that type of those type of situations that we want that we want to do all the time in america um just over exaggerating the point of like you can look at it and be like wow is it always this fucking ridiculous when people say stuff like that and i like that i really like that a lot um it reminds me of another song that a friend of mine wrote that I won't talk about on here because I know I'll get people jumping down my throat, especially if they go look up the video. Um, but if you know who Facecast is, the band Facecast, you probably know what video I'm talking about and what song I'm talking about. And if you know Tiny, then you know that it's not a bad song. Favorite animated film? Um, I really like Frozen. Um, I mean, who doesn't? Duh. I guess it's more, probably one of the more popular ones recently. Um, it's one of the um, really only like Disney movies I've, one of the newer Disney movies I've watched in a long time. Um, I mean, I've caught like bits and pieces of Wally and Up. I've never actually seen the whole movie of either of them. I did see the end of Wally and not cool. It was not, it was not a cool ending because I thought I was going to die. I thought my heart was going to stop at the end of that movie. Um, I guess my favorite animated film. Oh, jeez. One that I watch a lot would have been the Digimon movie when I was really little. Um, I wish I still had it. It's a great movie. I've watched it since I was little. I've watched it as an adult, and it's still great. I've always loved Digimon. It was one of my favorite animated shows. We're going to add that to my one of my favorite cartoons as well. It's Digimon. You were great. Seasons 1 and 2. 3, not so much. After that, who gives a fuck? Um, but yeah, great show. I loved the movie. I really don't know what my favorite animated movie would be. I almost, I almost want to say Sin City, and I know that's not animated, but it kind of was at the same time. Um, best date you've ever been on? Again, I don't know. I don't go on a lot of dates. Um, I think probably one of the more, I guess, successful and also really great dates that I went on. I won't call it best date, um, but uh, was this, this lovely, lovely lady named Carrie. Um, shit, that was almost like a year and a half ago now. Um, we met online, uh, online dating site, just beautiful, beautiful roller derby girl, um, from, uh, from Albany. She was phenomenal. Great, great lady. I wish things could have worked out. I wish I'd been in a better place when everything, when I met her. Um, but all we did, we went, we got coffee for our first date and we walked around the park. Like that was just so cool. And we just walked around, we talked, we sat under some trees. Um, I think we picked some flowers. Maybe I could be misremembering that. I do have really shitty memory, and I apologize if I'm wrong. Um, but it was awesome. We just got to know each other, and it was really a lot of fun. Uh, what would be your last meal? Um, I don't know. Pussy? No, that's a terrible That's That would be a terrible answer. Um... God, I don't know. Like, having to pick something that, like, the last thing that I taste in the world. Jesus. I, my, the other thing comes to mind, I don't have any serious answers for this, because the next thing is, like, a six-pack of beer. Because I, I love beer. I would love for that to be the last thing I taste. Would be a six-pack of Duck Rabbit Milk Stout from North Carolina. Um, farming, um, ah, where is it from? I say Farmington. I know it's not. It's Farmville, North Carolina. I think it's Farmville, North Carolina. Um, amazing brewery. Amazing beer. Um, yeah, I honestly don't know. Pizza. I love pizza. Pizza and wings. Pizza and wings. I can have more than one thing. I forgot about that. I want pizza, wings, and a six-pack of beer. And maybe to go down on a lady. Again, those are some of my favorite flavors in the world, and that's what I want in my mouth when I do. Uh, what age did you lose your virginity? Um, 17. I was actually 17. I uh, lost it to uh, my girlfriend at the time. We were both virgins. Um, the first girl I ever loved. It was really, really, um, I don't want to say special. It was awkward, and I, I know I enjoyed it, but I feel like I, I know she probably didn't really enjoy it that much, um, because I had no fucking idea what I was doing, um, as most people who are virgins probably don't. Um, but yeah, it was kind of a bumbling mess. Um, it happened really organically, which I was glad about. Um, like we had kind of like, we would hang out at her house a lot. And like when our parents, I mean, obviously her parents weren't around all the time. So like when we were hanging out alone, like we would fool around and we would kind of like 
you know, sometimes it would escalate, sometimes it wouldn't. And I just, it did really happen really organically. It wasn't like a thing where we're like, we're going to have sex today. And then we went over and had sex. No, like we were just kind of going at it. And um, it just, it didn't, it started escalating and it didn't stop. Um, so I'm glad that that happened that way. I think that's really kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. 17 was a big year for me. It's the first time I smoked cigarettes. First time, first time I ever uh, really drank. Uh, it's when I, uh, first time I ever smoked weed. First time I ever actually touched a boob. 17 was a huge year for me. I said, fuck your childhood. I'm 17. The world is my late blooming oyster. Um, can I lick you? I guess. I mean, I don't really know how I taste. Um, I recommend doing it earlier in the day as opposed to later. I do sweat a lot at work, so. Um, how tall are you? I'm 5'10". Um, I'm pretty average. Um, if I wear boots, I'm like 5'11". Um, but... I'm fairly average. I have a lot of really tall friends, so I've always felt kind of really. I've always felt super short because all my friends are like six foot five, six foot six, um, at least six feet tall. So I'm constantly looking up at people. So when I meet people that are shorter than me, I think it's really cool, <laughs> um, just because I'm so used to like looking up at people. So even making like straight level eye contact with someone is really awesome. Um, I've also I've dated women taller than me too, um, which isn't really that weird. Um, the only time it was kind of weird is I hugged a girl from behind once, and my 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 like eyes were like at her shoulder blades and I was like that's different so boobs or butts well I have both um, you can tell I'm, I'm sure all of you have seen I am a chubby man um, but boobs or butts I'm gonna go with assuming they meant preference um, flat out answer I don't care. Um, I like boobs. I like butts. Um, obviously, neither of them are actually like necessarily related to, I guess, sex. But at the same time, like they're neat. They're fun to look at. Um, I know I like looking at my own butt. I have a great butt. Um. For the longest time, I was really, it was a huge, I was a huge boob guy. Literally, huge boobs. I love them. I still do. Um, I don't know why. I think it's probably, like, some sort of, like, ingrained, like, fertility thing. Same thing like how I love, like, um, I tend to be more attracted to thicker, um, chubbier women and with really wide hips. And some, like, ingrained, like, look how fertile she probably is. <laughs> like, she probably won't die during childbirth. Um... But yeah, so for a long time I was into that. Um, a lot of times that tends to go along with having a big butt. Um, not always. And it's perfectly fine either way. Um, butt proportions. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I just I just appreciate aesthetic in any way. Um, I mean, I just, I just appreciate the way people look. I think the way people look are so amazing. And I mean, for men and women and everything in between. Like the, the way people present themselves is just so interesting to me. Um, it's so crazy that we have so many different ways you can approach the world and have people perceive you. And while how people perceive you is not important, I think it's interesting to see the way that people do. Um, so, yeah, butts or boobs? I say butts and boobs. I'm not picking one. I like both of them. Um, I like big lady. I like big boobies on ladies. I like small boobs on ladies. In-betweens, don't, don't care. I like... Big butts on ladies, bubble butts, droopy butts, I don't care. Dude butts, dude, if you're a dude and you got a good butt, show your dude butt off. That's so great. I wish I had better jeans for showing off my butt. Um, so if you find a pair of pants, if you're a dude and you find a pair of pants that shows off your butt, do it. Wear those pants. Wear like a low, like a, a high riding t shirt too, so they can see that butt. Also, don't put, if you have a good butt, like don't put your wallet in your back pocket. You've got like, you have a really curvy butt. As a man or as a woman, you could usually put your wallet in your back pocket. If your pants are showing off that butt, the wallet looks good. <laughs> I try and keep mine out of there because I'm like, I don't want this random square of whatever the fuck it is just chilling on my butt cheeks. So like other, it's like lefties looking all nice and curvy and round, and this one's got like a block of cheese sticking out of it. <laughs> um, fave type of undies on a girl? None, I guess. I don't know. Um, you're gonna get a lot of non-serious answers from me. Be prepared for that. Favorite type of undies on a girl? I don't care. I really don't. Um, 
I mean, of course, it's, I don't know if that actually counts as, like, undies, but I do, I love corsets. I always have. Um, I think it kind of falls into um, my kind of love of, like, vintage things, um, vintage attire and aesthetic. But, yeah, I, I mean, I, honestly, I really don't. Um, as, as far as, like, panties go, like, you want to wear a thong, you want to wear a G-string, fucking cool. I mean, they're sexy, they're neat. Um, I've been a huge fan of the, um, of, like, those cage panties, like, those things with, like, like the strings that go across the butt cheeks. I think those are really cool. Um, I just kind of bums me out because uh, women have so many awesome options for underwear. And believe me, I've tried. Don't fit well in women's underwear. <laughs> as neat and great looking as they are, um, it's really not. Doesn't work well for me. So I wish they made. I wish they made really cool looking underwear um, designed for people with bits between their legs, because um, that shit's hard to kind of stuff in there sometimes. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I really don't care. Um, and wear whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I think I think they all look great. Um, I've never I've never had someone take their pants off and been like, oh, really? Like that's what you chose to wear? Like, no, I don't give a fuck. Wear what you want. Um, favorite pinup gap? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know a lot of pinup models. Um, I've known friends who look like pinup girls. My friend Rachel pulls off that aesthetic very well. Um, she's a sweetheart, and oh my god, can she kill it in a pencil skirt? Holy shit. Um, yeah, so I don't really know how to answer that. <laughs> so we're going to move on. I apologize to the user or person or whoever who sent me that question. I'm sorry. Um, top five favorite tumblers. Um, my top three is always going to be the same. It's always going to be um, Taylor, Housewife Swag, uh, Karina, Molotov Cocktees, and um, Jen, uh, Just to Be About Baby. They are, I'm going to, I'll tag them in the, I'm going to tag all five of my, uh, my favorite tumblers in the description for the video um, when I post it, by the way. So if you guys do want to go out and follow them, which I do highly suggest, um, you guys can do that. Also so they can see this, so they know that, that you know, I can share my appreciation for what these, what these people do. Those are always my top three. Um, people have questioned me about that before. I'm like, oh, you only like ladies who are naked on the internet. No, that's not true. Them being naked, obviously... I don't hate it. <laughs> They're gorgeous, gorgeous women. They're all three of them are gorgeous girls. Um, so like them being naked is just like a super plus in my mind. Um, the reason that I I've loved um, their blog so much um, is because of like just who they who they are and the way they present um, their ideas to the world. Um, both um, Housewife Swag and Molotov Cocktails, Karina and Taylor are both just such I followed them for a very, very long time. Um, Housewife Sags probably like the newest one the, out of those three is the one that I followed for the least amount of time. Um, Jen I followed back when she was um, optimistic the challenge, I think. But um, all three of them have just, are just so in, inspirational. I mean, Karina especially. Um, I know when I found her blog, I was blown away initially because I knew it was this gorgeous woman um, wearing almost nothing. It was amazing. Um, but then the more I kind of delved into it, she's such a fan. They're, um, they're all, all three of my three fantastic people. Um, they have such great views on body positivity, um, self-love and self-care. Um, and they it's amazing to see these people meet the, the hate that they get with such an open and understanding point of view. Um, Taylor especially, uh, Housewives Like does this so, so much. And I... I almost, as much as I hate this because I don't like seeing her get nasty messages, but I do almost love when it, when it does happen because just the way that she responds is so inspiring. There is just, I have never in my life seen someone who has so much care and so much love for people she's never met. Um, and it's amazing to me that every time that that happens to them, they just respond with, they don't know, they don't stoop to that level. They, they just kind of brush it off and say, hey, like, I'm sorry that, you know, like, you know, it sucks that you're, you feel that way. You know, I wish I can, I can help you if you want. But. So those are my top three. Um, the other two are, um, I guess, not as Tumblr famous. Um, I guess Sarah kind of is. Um, 
The other one is my uh, very good friend of mine, um, Sam, Sammy Shenanigans, or Little Baby, or Baby Bottle Butt Crack. If you follow her and you call her Baby Bottle Butt Crack, um, she's going to yell at me, so I encourage you to do it. Baby Bottle Butt Crack, do it. Um, her Tumblr is Locally Do Ruins Everything. Again, will be tagged in the description for the video. Um, or not in the description, in the post on Tumblr. Um, fantastic, fantastic human being. Probably one of my favorite people ever. Her blog is super cool. Her taste in music is super cool. Um, her, I mean, she's gorgeous. She is like, ugh. First time I ever saw her, I almost fell out of my chair. Uh, super awesome lady. Go follow her. She's really cool. She's fun to talk to. Um, the other one is my friend Sarah, um, Sailor Sarah. Um, I followed her way back when, um, when she was doing like, the whole cam girl thing. And um, initially, again, it was another one where it was like, oh my God, like, look at this beautiful lady. But she's just, she's just so fantastic. She's such a fantastic um, human being. Um, she's been there for me in really, really, really hard times. Um, she's gotten me through a lot. We've become very good friends over like the however long, I was, maybe two years-ish, maybe not, I don't know, since we first had contact with each other. But um, but yeah, um, Sailor Sarah, her name is Sarah, she's fantastic. Um, those are my top five. So if you're not in it, it doesn't mean I don't love you at all. Just those are the ones that um, have helped me the most as to grow as both a user on here and as a person in, in my life. I think I'm a better person for having known these people. Um, what does it take for you to follow someone back? I, nothing. Um, there are a lot of people that I um, that follow me. Um, I do have a um, a fair amount of um, porn blogs that follow me. Um, not entirely sure why, um, but they do. I don't always follow porn blogs back. Um, I try and not post explicitly pornographic material on my own blog. Um, just because I don't want to, I don't want to have my blog have that aesthetic. Um, I like I like posting things that I do for a very specific reason. And yes, there's nudity in my blog. Um, I try and keep it in the realm of just nudity and not um, like sex. Like I don't like post sex, sex gifts and things like that. Um, which is tough because I have a lot of friends that are on here that are um, that are cam girls and they're they're phenomenal people. They're amazing cam girls. And I always want to like help promote their stuff, but sometimes they do um, tie in gifts from their work. And like I said, it's nothing against them, and I'm fucking good on them for doing what they do. I love them, and I try and support them as much as I can. Um, it's just I, I I've gotten backlash before for being a porn blog, and I don't consider myself to be one. Um, so I don't tend to follow back porn blogs all the time. Um, a lot of my other ones are um, I do have a very very large gay following. Um, I understand why. Um, I fit the quality of what I guess what is called a bear. Um, I think it's great. You guys are all phenomenal. Um, some of my favorite, most like uplifting messages have come from um, my gay followers, and some of them are just—they're so amazing. They're so nice. They're such nice people. Um, I have had some unpleasant interactions with them before. Um, I have gotten some aggressive messages in the past, and um, some unsolicited sexual pictures. So I feel your pain. Um, um, ladies who, who have to deal with that, I understand what that's like. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks a lot. Um, some of them I don't always follow back because, again, they fall almost in the category of um, a lot of like gay porn. Um, again, I have no issue with that kind of stuff. But again, with not wanting to necessarily have actual porn on my blog, and also, I mean, I'm I mean, I'm not gay, so I, it's not something I particularly enjoy viewing. Um, if your blog does have really cool stuff, I haven't meaning to go through and follow, um, go through my, um, my list of followers and see who I'm not following and check out their blogs. Cause I do, I get like spurts, um, every once in a while of like, you know, six or seven or eight or 10 or 15 people to start following me out of nowhere. Um, usually when my naked pictures start circulating, I tend to get a lot. Um, so I haven't meaning to go through and do that and check out everyone's blog. I'm not really great about doing that when, when I see that they started following me. I don't always have time. Sometimes I'm at work or I'm just kind of out and about. They notice I have a new follower. I don't always go check out their blog. Um, so if I'm not, if you are following me and I'm not following you back, don't give up hope. Um, I'm going to be going through and kind of like seeing who's following me that I don't follow and check out their blog and see what it's like. So if I like your shit, go follow you. Um, zombies question mark is the next one. Um, I don't know how to address that. Um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna take it two different couple different ways, um, just for the sake of you making this a question. Again, I apologize. Don't listen to that part. It's gross. Um, do I like zombies? Yes, I love zombies. I think the idea of it's super cool. Um, I think it plays into my overly sadistic nature, <laughs> um, internal nature. I'm a very nice person. Don't worry. I won't hurt you unless you pay me. Um, but I love zombies. I think they're super cool. Um, I like being scared. I'm a fan of horror. Um, as much as easily as I get scared, especially with supernatural stuff, I love it too. I love being scared. I think it's so much fun. It's such an exhilarating feeling. Um, but yeah, I've always loved. I've always really been interested in like creepy, gross things. Um, zombies are super gross. I mean, with people walking around with parts falling off, and organs coming out. Yeah, yeah. it's great. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, I really like zombies. I think they're super cool. Um, I'm also going to take this as: Do you think it could happen? Um, I don't know why I'm taking it that way. I think I just want to talk about it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> there's no way to know. Um, I don't think there's any way to accurately say yes or no on this question. I think there's definitely things that exist nowadays that probably might be able to make like a zombie apocalypse plague type situation probably come about. I think the most accurate one I've seen is on um, like nanobots, uh, like militarized like nanomites that actually get inside people's systems. And basically keep them alive um but who knows i mean viruses are always evolving um the world is always changing and there's always new shit being pumped into our lives um chemically speaking so who knows it's probably pretty possible um i don't fucking know for sure i'm definitely not a scientist probably the furthest thing from that uh do you use any product in your beard i don't um aside from conditioner i use um I use, well, I have a two-in-one. I have a shampoo and conditioner um, that I use in my beard every once in a while just to kind of keep it a little bit soft. I don't like it when it's too scratchy. Um, I try and trim it. Aside from that, there's no beard oils. Um, there's no, like, scrubs or anything like that. Um, I haven't been in to pick up beard oil just to give it a shot. I want to get one of those, like, four airbrushes and kind of really go to town and try and take better care of one of my favorite features of myself. Cuddles forever or no beard ever? Um... I miss. I don't know how to answer this. I I initially had a way in my mind, and then now reading it, I realized that like it doesn't work. Um, the only thing I can think of is like I have to pick one. Like I have to pick either always having someone to cuddle or never having a beard. That's a really easy choice. Like obviously, I'm gonna pick the one where I get to keep my beard and cuddle somebody. Um, unless they meant no cuddles ever or no beard ever, in which case I would pick no beard ever. Um, because I could have the biggest, bushiest, mainliest, greatest beard in the world. If I didn't have anyone that wanted to cuddle with me, that would fucking blow. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, where'd your question start? <sighs> um, the next one is big booty bitches or small titted hoes. Again, this falls in the line of, I don't care. <laughs> Um, aesthetic is aesthetic. It's the things that I enjoy are not I, like the the look that I enjoy in people is never categorized by specific things. Um, I mean, I've met people that basically fit. I guess what people assume is my type that I have not found particularly attractive the way they um, uh, put themselves together, which is fine. They don't have to fucking be attractive to me. <laughs> Someone out there loves the way they look and that's great um and then i found women that people are like i would never think you like her i'd be like dude she's fucking gorgeous are you kidding me um i don't really i so i can't take that question um i don't particularly like this question um but i'm not going to get into that too much so on to the next one what type of deodorant do you use um as much as this gets thrown about um kind of bashing it i use axe um it's cheap smells okay and it works pretty well i use the um the antiperspirant and uh, it keeps me from being a stinky bastard um i do sweat a lot at work so i have to make sure that i i try and maintain even though i work at a hardware store i always try and present myself fairly well um uh, what shampoo and conditioner do you use 
similar question or a similar answer. I use Axe shampoo and conditioner. It's a two in one. Um, I use Axe Anarchy for him because I'm so punk rock. Um, actually, because it smells the best in my opinion. Um, it works. I don't have. Um, I don't do a lot to my hair. Um, I don't really blow dry my hair. I don't really um, use too much, too many different chemicals in it. Um, so there's not a ton of damage. I don't really need anything like heavy duty or anything really crazy. So I stick with a two in one. Keeps it soft, gets the shit out of my hair at the end of the day. That's all I care about. 80s goth music. Do you like it? I don't know. Um, I can't really... I've actually only recently... When I say recently, within like five years, really learned what goth music was. For the longest time, I was like, oh, and then just like... they To me, goth just seemed like metal kids. In my eyes, I was very sheltered. Um, don't judge me. But it only recently kind of been kind of brought into like what would be goth music, I guess, like Depeche Mode and stuff like that. Um, I, I always kind of felt like, along the lines, like industrial, like ministry and vile. Um, so do I like it? I don't really know. Um, I haven't heard a ton of it. I haven't really been able to make an accurate depiction. Um, as far as Depeche Mode is concerned, I don't, I'm not 100% super fond of them. I like Depeche Mode and Bajas. I'm not like wild. Uh, I do like ministry. I do like vile. I like industrial, um, industrial metal. So take that as you will. Okay, the next one I actually have is um i have quite a few um if you could live anywhere in the world where would it be and why i i don't know um i definitely want to go somewhere warmer um there's always been a part of me that wanted to live in arizona when i was um when i was studying to be a pilot when i was um you know doing all my like flight tests and stuff i really want to go to arizona um it's a great place um as far as like weather is concerned to be a pilot because there's not a ton of like tempestuous weather um is that the right? I don't know. Um, there's not a lot of shitty weather. We'll get back down to basics here. Oh, there's not a lot of there's not a ton of shitty weather. Um, so that would be one option. I've always wanted to uh, at least visit Australia. Um, some people who know me probably might know why, um, but there's other reasons besides um, that situation. Um, it's always really cool. Um, and also, I love. I love, love, love Maori culture. I've always wanted to like go and like learn more about it. Um, I think they're fucking fantastic. Um, the influence they've had, um, their their artwork um, has influenced modern tattooing in just insane ways. And I've always wanted to go and learn more about it. Um, so there's two. We're gonna cut this short because I'm getting close to an hour long in this video. And again, I really apologize. Um, I like a little bit. I apologize a little bit. Really. I hope, I hope, hope, hope people are watching all this stuff. Uh, what is your favorite artist or band or your favorite song by them? Um, I can't pick one. I'm not going to. You can't make me. You're not the boss of me. Um, <laughs> if I had to pick um, something that was meaningful to me, um, God, I don't even know. I had like the two most significant bands in my life would have been um, Smile Empty Soul. Judge me, I don't care. Um, <laughs> Smile Empty Soul and Hate Breed. Um, just because they've gotten me through a lot. Um, Smile Empty Soul, like, when I was really, really young, I was, I didn't know, I didn't even know, like, much about depression. I just knew that to be depressed meant to be sad. Um, and I knew that I was sad. Um, but yeah, I had, like, um, recurring suicidal thoughts when I was really young, when I was, like, 13, 14, 15 years old. And, um, my sister's, she's two years older than I am. She's always kind of been, like, my, my musical guide in some regards. Um, because she was, when I was, um, like, 12 and 13, she was super duper, like, into, like, local metal and hardcore and, like, punk stuff. So, like, I kind of, like, leached off of her. She had a smile through soul album. And I used to listen to them all the time, and it kind of, like, made me feel better about everything. Um, just knowing that other people felt the same way I did was just so amazing. Um, and Hatebreed, because it's kind of taught me to, like, their, their songs always have such a strong, oh, sorry. Excuse me. Such a strong positive message and such a amazing like to me like one of the most self-empowering some of the most self-empowering music i've ever listened to um and also made me feel less bad about being so angry all the time because they have a really big focus on anger being a really big positive can be used positively and one of the best proponents for um or the best things to use for change in your life is anger and even to a certain extent hatred um lesser extent but that's we're not gonna need it so yeah there we go um, what is your most prized possession? Me? Um, I think the thing I cherish in my life the most right now is probably myself. 
Um, I've come a very, very long way in my journey of life in dealing with um, my own mental illnesses and dealing with um, everything. <laughs> um, I've come a long way, especially in the last like probably five years. Um, yeah, especially in the last five years since I turned 21. Um, I'm 26 soon. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, I think that's probably one of my most prized possessions is myself, and I don't care if that's selfish for me to say. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have any real significant things in my life. Um, material possessions, I think, are cool. Um, I love stuff. I'm not afraid to admit it. I am materialistic. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, but I, I could mean I could do without almost any of it. Um, I mean, obviously, like having a cell phone at least is always really, really nice because I use it for a lot of things. Um, real world stuff too, not just browsing Tumblr while I poop at work. Um, but yeah, as far as like deep down, like my, the thing I, I cherish the most right now is myself. Um, I put a lot of work in myself and I'm really proud of where I'm at. So there you go. Um, oh, this was, this was, um, I did, I did get some naughty questions. This is pretty cool. Um, this one is worded. What times have you jacked off in one day? I assume it means how many. Um, I don't know what the, the most is. Um, I know the most times I've had sex in a day was like six. Um, and by number, I think by number five, like my dick just hurt and I didn't even, I couldn't, I physically didn't possess the ability to come on the sixth time. Um, we didn't like wait long enough for me to like refuel. But, um, yeah, I don't know what the most times is. I would say on average, two to three. Um, not one to three, because there's days where I'm going to get one in. Um, usually at least every day though. Um, I, especially lately I've spent a lot, I mean, I spent a lot of time by myself. I enjoy spending my time by myself. So, yeah, I have, a lot of times it's out of boredom. Um, would you ever partake in a devil's three-way? Um, being two guys and one girl. I, absolutely. Um, I think it'd be really fun. Um, I think people who are only open to, um, a female, female, male three-way, are missing out and they're also i feel like it's i feel like those are less likely um in all honesty um sexual openness is becoming more prevalent in society and i think that's super great um but i still know a a lot of um a lot of women who are still really reserved and i think that's really cool because i think you should have the ability to choose that um i think as um right now as sexual beings um the male gender tends to be a little bit more freed than um than females and that's only because we've been bred to be that way we've been conditioned since birth that it's okay for us um which is wrong um i think everyone should be told that it's okay for them to be sexually free and open so you know smash the patri patriarchy and all that jazz um but yeah i totally would i think it'd be totally fine i think it'd be really cool um I think in the right situation, that can be an amazing, amazing experience for everyone involved. Um, obviously, I mean, there's stuff that I won't do. Um, like I don't want to perform oral on a man. It's not something I'm interested in doing. Um, I've had stuff put in my butt. I don't want stuff put in my butt. Um, I tried it. Not my thing. <laughs> I've tried numerous times, too. This isn't like a one-time, like, oh, I did it once and it was weird. Like, I try to get accustomed to it. it is, it's not my thing. Um, so, I mean, there's stuff that I won't do in that situation, but yeah. Um, what is your most erogenous spot on your body? I love this for the use of the word erogenous. Um, I think it's a cool word. So, kudos to you, person who asked me this. Um, but my most erogenous spot on my body is probably my neck. Um, that I that I've found so far. Um, again, I'm obviously leaving out my dick because, fucking duh. Um, but yeah, my neck. I mean, I love. Like kissing, sucking, or licking. Very light biting. I did have a girl who I was pretty sure was trying to chew my head off one day, and that was unpleasant. It looked like someone kicked me in the neck after that. It was a huge, like, huge bruise. Um, but yeah, like licking, kissing, and like really light biting on there. It was just, ugh. I will make some of the most fun noises ever if you do that right. What is your favorite part of the female body? This is probably going to be a weird one noses and ears. Um, I don't know why, and there's and it's, there's no and this isn't even like a specific. I don't look for a specific characteristic in noses and ears. I just love them, and I don't know why. And not in like a sexual way. I think just to look at. Um, 
Like I love like those cute little button noses that they barely stick out, but they're nice. They're like really wide. I love. I mean, and then sometimes you get the ones that are like nice and long and pointed, and like they have a really nice arc coming down. Um, I love when there's um, like you can see like visible like maybe they had like a deviated or um, maybe they had their nose broken at some point, and there's that little bump or like a little like shift over here. I think it's so cool. Um, I love them. I love looking at them. Um, I think it's one of the most interesting parts of the human body in general, um, because especially if you consider how much that this little fucker actually influences um, speech, smell, uh, taste, I'm sure all their stuff too. Um, and ears, I mean, they're just cute. I mean, they're, they're adorable little ornaments. Um, also, it's probably one of the places in the body you can pierce the most. Um, so I love that. As a piercer, I always, I love anything that has a lot of potential for that. Um, and that was all for those. Um, thank you for submitting dirty questions, by the way. I thought that was really cool. I was afraid that some of them were going to get too intense by some people, but um, yeah, no, those were really fun. So kudos. Uh, top five favorite albums of 2014. I, I, I honestly can't really remember which ones came out. Um, so I'm just going to rattle some shit off. I have to look it up because it's on my phone. It's all ones that I bought. Oh, it'll tell me the one the year that it came out too. Nifty. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, stuff that came out two thousand fourteen. Oh, Dear Youth. Um, Ghost Inside. Was that? Yes, two thousand fourteen. Okay. Um, amazing, amazing album. The first song, Avalanche, blows me away. I got chills the first time I listened to it. If you like the Ghost Inside or if you like hardcore, go check it out. Dear Youth. Um, amazing. Uh, that was 2013. What's this? Uh, that was 2011, which is good because I feel weird mentioning it. Oh, um, The Hunting Party, um, Lincoln Park's newest album. I think it's really cool. Um, it goes back to a lot of what they used to do as far as like hybrid theory and Meteora goes. Um, they kind of really got back to that kind of like rap alternative kind of thing. Um, they have a couple songs with they have a song with Darren Malakian and Tom Morello as well. Um, really, really awesome album. They did a punk song, which was super cool. Um, I, I was like, I was so like thrown off when I heard the, the opening guitar riff, and I was like, wow, I'm like this sounds like it could be like Black Flag or something. Um, so that was like super, super cool. Um, oh, um, Our Endless War, um, White Chapel's newest album was really, really great. Um, I, I don't know that it was like maybe like one of my favorites, but it's one that I one that I bought. It was a 2014 album that I purchased, um, and I really liked it. So, um, that's probably it <laughs> um, as far as new albums that I have to to list for that. So, sorry, I think I only had um, four, three or four. Um, swim with ten sharks or have to hug five bears? Probably the bears. Um, one. Sharks creep me out, um, just because I know that I can't see them when I'm in the water. Fuck them for being stealthy. Um, yeah, but no, bears, probably just because bears are floofy, and, and also, you didn't specify what kind of bears, so I'm gonna say, um, five panda bears, and fuck your whole thing up, your whole choice system, because if I hug a panda bear, there's, like, a pretty good chance it's probably not gonna kill me. Um, I'm pretty sure a panda can't kill anything. Um, they're... From what I've seen, they're the doofiest animal in the world, and I'm not sure why they're still alive. Uh, how often do you wear pants? More than I like to. Um, obviously, I have to when I go outside. Um, it is winter, so I tend to wear them even when I'm inside now because it's cold. I also, as I'm sure people have noticed from my blog, I do I live with my parents again. Um, I had to move back in after some trials and uh, some uneasiness with my old apartment um, and some poor decisions financially on my part. So, uh, so living with them, I tend not to wear walk around my pants. Bigger, small tits. What is your preference? My preference is just tits. Um, I've had, I've been with girls that had humongous boobs, like two hands and still not, and they were still hard to pick up. Um, I've been with girls who had really, really small boobs, um, like almost not there. I don't care. <laughs> I love them. I love the female body. I think it's beautiful, and I think it's 
I don't give a shit if you have, like, the world's largest tits or if you have, like, none. The fuck ever. I feel like I've answered that question before on here already. Um, favorite eye color on a girl? I do have a preference with this. Um, not really a preference, but just one that I really enjoy. It doesn't really equate to anything in my mind. Like, if you don't have this, I don't. It doesn't mean anything to me. I'll have green eyes, just because it's really uncommon. Um, one of my, my ex-fiance actually had green eyes, and she has, she didn't just have green eyes, she has like the most beautiful green eyes I've ever seen. And that was one of the things that I felt like blew me away. I used to call her angel eyes. Um, favorite piercings on a female? Anything. Um, any, I'm a wolf. Anything that isn't like your, your typical stuff. Like if you have like females that have like lip piercings and nose piercings, I mean, they're, I mean, nose piercings are pretty common, but I mean, even lip piercings are getting more common. Um, but like anything like septums, eyebrows, um, any surface piercings I think are really, really cool. Um, nipples, um, obviously, who doesn't love nipples? Um, genital piercings, I think they're really cool. Um, the reason I like them so much, not because of their association with vaginas. Um, because they're not, they're not so common, it shows like, it's just neat. And not a lot of people are willing to go through with doing it, especially, um, People have like Christina or um, inner outer labia rings. I really like a lot because I feel like they're they're not seen as much. Um, you don't see them a lot. I mean, ECH vertical uh, total hood piercings are pretty common. Um, HCH is not as common, but horizontal um, total hood not as common. I have seen it, but yeah. So uh, anyway, um, I love body modification in any of its forms. I don't care if you've got a goddamn. I don't care if you got a tribal tattoo. Or, you know, a full back piece. Fucking awesome. I want to see it. Like, I think it's great. Even if even if your artist was terrible. If your art, even if your artist was terrible, I still want to see your tattoo. And I'm not going to make you feel bad about it, but I'm going to make sure that you know that I don't like that. I'm going to make sure that you know that it was poorly done so you can make your artist feel bad about it. Um, favorite spot on a female to have tattooed? Again, anything. <laughs> I love body modification. I fully support people doing whatever they want to do. Um, you want to tattoo your face? Fucking tattoo your face. Do I tattoo my face? No. Probably hurts. <laughs> um, I don't like that aesthetic. Um, but if you want to do it, fucking do it. Uh, I will never be the person that tells someone that they shouldn't get a tattoo. Um, I, I don't care if like you want to get the dumbest tattoo in the world. Like, you want to get a Furby tattooed on you. Do it. Like, I don't give a shit. That's the best part about this. Is you can do whatever you want with your body. And um, I think it's amazing. So... I am pro body modification for anyone that for some reason couldn't guess. Uh, what are three of your turn ups? Um, this is kind of weird because I guess it doesn't really, there's nothing specific. Um, cause one, cause two people could do the same thing, um, for me and I could have two very different responses. And I think everything with that is circumstantial. So I'll list stuff that I normally do like, um, excellent conversations. Um, I'm not saying that we have to be talking constantly all the time. Um, I, for one, always appreciate, I can appreciate silence, and uh, I don't consider there anything to be an uncomfortable silence. Uh, but I do like a really, really good, involved conversation. I hate small talk. Um, I love to talk about like philosophy, space, conspiracies, you know, aliens, ghosts, demons. I love to talk about religion. I love to talk about politics. Um, I love to debate. I really do. That's another one of these. Um, like passionate debating is a huge turn on for me. Um, it really, really, it for anybody. I mean, I think, yeah, these these also don't necessarily, I'm not applying these just to women that I'm interested in. I'm applying it to people, that, things that attract me to people. Um, yeah, like I love debating. Um, I am not, I am not one to get, um, like jaded about a debate. I mean, obviously, if you're being like a dick, um, I'm gonna be a little bit upset. But like, if you if we can have like a really good, like excellent discussion where like you know, I'm listening to what you're saying and you're listening to what I'm saying and like we're both taking new, taking that into account and like kind of like just going back and forth. It's amazing. I don't know if any if none of you if any of you have not ever had that in your in your life, I'm sorry. And if you want it, come talk to me. Um. Oh, I need a third one. Um. I don't know. I really don't. Nerds? I like nerdy people. Like, if you like Star Wars, I'm definitely going to want to be your friend. 
Uh, favorite pinup girl did that. Don't know what to do with it. Um, how many tattoos do you have and do you have plans for more? Um, yeah, I do. Um, lots of plans for lots more. Um, let's see if I got any new ones. No, I didn't get any new ones. This is the last one. So what are your kinks? Um, I don't really know. Um, I've learned in, um, in my time, I've learned that there are names for the, like, work, things like kinks, specific, specific things. And that you were like, oh, like, this is my kink. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, I guess. I never knew that. I was always just, like, this guy that was like, I don't know, like, I really like violence. <laughs> um, I was just always very sadistic and dominant. Um, for the longest time, I didn't even know why. Uh, I understand it more now. Um, I understand controlling that aspect of myself a lot more um, after a few unpleasant incidences. Um, nothing crazy. Also, don't assume I'm like some monster. They were. I learned the value of having establishing a safe word. We'll say that way. Um, something we both look back and laugh on now. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Um, I can list the stuff that I like to do. Um, I really, 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 really like tying people up. Um, I wish I got to do it more. I don't always really get to do that. Um, both for the sake of not always having <laughs> supplies, um, and not always having, um, someone that's into that, um, which is huge, huge, huge. When, when, remember this when you're discussing kinks, never, never try and convince someone to indulge in your kink. If they don't want to do it right off the bat, move on. <laughs> move on. Um, just remember, no doesn't mean convincement. Ever. Even if you're married. Um, but yeah, I really like that. I really like porn. I mean, your basic stuff. I really like spanking, hair pulling. Um, I've never really done too much with, um, with gagging. I mean, like, I've covered mouths and stuff like that, but I've never actually used a gag. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, um, because one of my favorite things is the noises people make, um, during sex. I think those are really, really cool. Um, I myself am very noisy, so, I don't know, I, I'd like to try it at some point just to kind of see if someone is open with it, but we'll find out about that one. Um, and then just general dominance, um, like the whole, like, being a dom thing. Um, uh... Anything like that kind of plays into that, and like, and like, and I don't mean like just like one of those, like slave master kind of things. Um, I see a lot on Tumblr the forceful dickhead dogs. Um, I just really love that whole um, commanding and combination of like commanding and caring toward your your submissive is um, is super cool. Um, I've yet to find a a partner that wants to delve all the way into that. Um, I would ideally, that would be, I guess we'll, we'll talk about this real quick, that would be ideally a woman that I, I would be with would be very into um, the dom the dominant submissive lifestyle um, and want to go full on into that. Um, I've always, always wanted to have a girl that was okay with being collared, um, not necessarily like always, always wearing like a big leather choker, but just something. Um, I always thought that was really, really neat. Uh, it's just that I, I always wanted to do that. I think that'd be really cool. So if you guys know anybody in my area, I am currently looking for people to meet. I'm feeling very social. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, my depression is kind of reciting, uh, residing a little. My depression is kind of like going away a little bit. Um, I don't really know why, but it's definitely starting to kind of subside. Subside. That was the word I was looking for before. Um, it's subsiding a little bit. So. So yeah, I mean, if you guys, as much as pathetic as this sounds, like if you guys have someone that you think I should meet, want to be, would want to be friends with me, by all means, please direct me my way. I love meeting new people. Um, I love making new friends. Um, if you guys want to talk to me, my inbox is always open. I never turn anonymous off. I'm always here to um, to help out as, as much as I can. If you have questions, you just want to say hi. Um, Please send me messages. I love, I love, love, love getting messages. Um, I always try and make sure that I answer most messages. Um, there have been a couple like really heartfelt ones that I haven't, at the time that I got them, didn't really have the um, the nerve to really respond. Um, people who were uh, who were reaching out to me when I was um, when I was having a really hard time, and uh, I can't thank those of you that do that enough. Um, you guys are definitely, definitely part of the reason that I'm still here. 
Um, I don't always say this lightly, um, but I definitely think at certain points Tumblr has, you guys, my, my Tumblr family has saved my life in some way, some way, shape, or form. Um, you've allowed me to develop into who I am, and I could not love who I am more than I do today. So thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Holy shit, this is like an hour and 50 minute video. Um, if you guys want more of these, by all means, let me know. Um, if you guys want to see me talk about anything in particular, let me know. I really, really, really enjoy, enjoy doing this. So if you guys want to see me talk about stuff, um, I've had a couple people that wanted me to start doing vape reviews. Um, I don't know how well that would go because I don't have the money to get the newest stuff all the time. Um, like I just spent $200 on my new rig that's hopefully coming tomorrow. Um, that is all new stuff. And that was like a one-time thing. I'm not fucking doing that again. Um, but yeah, if you guys want me to do anything, um, and if you guys want me to do more videos, please shoot me suggestions. I'm happy, happy to do them. I really enjoyed this. Um, I do have a, YouTube, I do have a um, subscription on YouTube. So if, if I did start doing videos, that's what they would be. Anyway, thank you guys so much. For those of you who did watch all of this, I can't thank you enough. Um, I love you all, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful whatever day it is when you're watching.